This is a special cut down YouTube version of Photo Walkthrough episode number 122. Today we're going to take a look at Content Aware Fill, the headline new feature in Photoshop CS5, to see if it's really worthwhile upgrading and see if it's any good. If you'd like to see the full episode, head on over to www.photowalkthrough.com and look for episode number 122. Okay, enjoy the show. Right, today I'm going to show you one of the brand new features of Photoshop CS5, which was announced very recently. Uh, hopefully I'm going to show you this something uh, in a little bit of a different way than you've seen it on all the demo videos so far. What I'm going to show you today is Content Aware Fill, and this is the really big headline feature for Photoshop CS5. This is the one that, uh, that I think Adobe would like to think is going to make you really want to buy Photoshop CS5 if you're a photographer. And it is a very useful feature, but let me show you uh, how well it works in some cases, and maybe a few cases where it doesn't work so well, so you can get a really good picture of how good a feature this is. And uh, so let's start. Here I've got a, um, a stitch panorama. This was shot in 11 pictures, um, taken while I was on holiday in Wales last, last week, uh, near Dolgetlau, and this is... Um, uh, one of the little estuaries heading out towards the to the sea on the west and west coast of Wales, um, and uh, um, as you can see, I didn't quite um, get all the areas I wanted covered. Um, but one of the big promises of Content Aware Fill is that it's going to allow us not to crop in on these stitch panoramas, but to fill out around the edges. Now. Um, and these edges around the top, you can see we've got some gaps here, and down the side we've got some gaps here. These are just the sort of things that you've seen the demos do well. So let's have a, a quick go at that. I'm going to start by using the uh, Spot Healing Brush tool, which you can get to with the keyboard shortcut J. And up here on the, uh, on the top bar, we've got a Content Aware option. Now I've flattened my layers here, just uh, um, so you're aware, I'm working on a single layer just to keep this um, file size uh, smaller so that I can record at the same time. Oops, I missed a little bit there. I'm just going to go along that top edge, down that right hand edge, and I'm just painting with this uh, spot healing brush tool in the content aware fill mode, just right around the edge. Um, now I'm not going to attempt to fill in that big blank area over on the left there, but I will try and do this little area here to begin with. And let's take a look. There we go. I think that's all of the white covered. And let's just give that a moment. Now, it does take a few minutes just to... Uh, well, not a few minutes. It takes a little while for it just to figure out what it's going to fill with. Um, and you can see right away, in some cases, it's done a great job. And in some cases, it's done a slightly less great job. But still not bad. It has filled out those areas. We've got a little bit of lightning down this side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit that again with the with the, the Content Aware uh, version of the Spot Healing Brush Tool. And it's it's getting it better um we're certainly filling in some of that missing detail and if you remember there was a big block missing here that is now filled in nicely the sky is looking pretty good um this area down here looking a little bit light um it, it is a little bit variable this i have seen it do a better job than this first time out so let's not feel too bad about how that's doing. That's not bad there. We've got a little bit of repeated texture there, but we'll deal with that in a moment. So that's so when it comes to filling out an image all the way to the edge with your panoramas, it actually does do a very good job. So um, uh, we have perhaps not shown it in its best light there, but that's that's not bad at all. Now, one of the other areas I wanted to show you, something it should be good at, we've got this sort of uh, cutting down here in the trees, which, uh, although it really was there, and, it, you know, that's that's a true photography, um, I'm not sure I, I think it's very attractive. So I'm just going to hit that also with the Spot Healing Brush tool. And as you can see, it does an excellent job there of filling that in. That really... Uh, is totally um, convincing and uh, it does a great job of filling that in. Now something that you wouldn't expect I think the the brush tool to do such a good job of is this big area here. So let's just have a quick go at that. Um, I'm going to use just a regular rectangular marquee and I'm just going to draw an area over that over that section of the of the image. Now this is a big area and really it's it's asking an awful lot for the software to figure out what might have been there. 
So, you know, I don't really have high hopes for this, but let's give it a try and just really push this tool and see how far it goes. So now there's a new keyboard shortcut here. I'm going to hold down shift and the backspace key on the Mac. Um, and that's going to bring up the fill uh, option here with uh, content aware is the uh, is, is the option we want here in the in the content section. So I'm going to press OK on that. And we're going to give it just a moment or two. Now look at that. That's actually, when you consider that it's got nothing at all to work from, absolutely nothing, it had no idea what was there, all it can do is just extrapolate along this line and extrapolate along this line and figure out what the texture of the water in between must have looked like. I've got to tell you, I think that's pretty darn good. Now, we can see there is a little bit of a join here, so let's go back to our spot healing brush tool. Oops, that's me to do that. Let's go back to our spot healing brush tool by pressing J. Um, and make our brush a little bit bigger and just see if we can remove that little join there which I think it does a pretty good job of. And we've got a, another little section there that could, could be improved so let's just sort that out. Not bad at all. Now we've got this area here that's obviously been taken from elsewhere in the image. Um, let's just zap that out see if we can get it to do something a little nicer and also just along there there, not bad at all. Now I think we can probably lose that little bit of grit there. Just let it do that some some uh, grass there. Now that's that's not bad. That's not bad at all. We've got some some problems here. Let's just see if we can sort that out. Yeah, it's going away. Um, and likewise there. Now, if you can accept that, that, that it's had to use something, so you can see it's reused this little bit of gravel here. We could do a little bit of cloning in. We could give it a, a, bit, of a, a bit more of a useful starting point. But I think you'll agree, in terms of um, ability to fill an area, and particularly up here where it had literally nothing to go, for, go on, it's a, it's a very subtle line there. And we can just sort that out with, with a few more hits of that... Um, of that brush tool, it does a pretty good job of generating all of that little coastline there and all of the water in between. And it, really, the only place where it's obvious that it's copied is here in the foreground. I think that's pretty impressive. I think that's that's done a really very good job. Um, other areas you might expect it to do well on, let's just look at these little bits of stuff sticking up out of the water here. Still using the, uh, the spot healing brush tool, still using it in content aware mode. And look, it, as you would expect, it's doing a great job of that. Uh, to be fair, uh, it would have done a great job of that before using Proximity Match as its option. So, um, as with all things in Photoshop, uh, this is another tool for the tool bag. This is uh, certainly a very impressive tool. And... Uh, um, when it comes to things like this, this, this coastline over here, I think the, the job it did there is absolutely spectacular. Um, in this particular case, it's not done a great job around the edges, but um, it normally does do a very good job around the around edges of, of, uh, um, uh, of stitch panoramas like this. It might be because I had it on a white background that it's not done such a great job there. But, but uh, um, I think this big area here... Very, very impressive work. I mean, particularly the water looks flawless. Just this little bit of coastline where it had to copy something um, is not perfect. But really, um, you know, spectacularly good work. And I think um, Adobe have got a real winner of a tool on their hands there. See, we could, we could keep hitting this and, and make it a little bit more realistic if we wanted to. But... Uh, um, you know, I think a little bit of cloning work would probably serve us better there than keep hitting it with the with the content aware tool, and then you know use the content aware to fill little areas in. So, uh, so is this reason enough to buy Photoshop CS5? On its own, probably not. But is it a, is it a useful tool? Is it something you'll use? Absolutely, yes. It is definitely something you will use, and it is something when you do get round to buying the new version of Photoshop, uh, uh, whatever version it is, maybe CS5, maybe CS6. It is something that you will be very happy to have in your toolkit. Okay, I'll try and show you another feature of CS5 in the next show. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you then. This video is an extract from Photo Walkthrough, an online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. If you'd like to see more, you can find all the old shows and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.